He would give you a story. In those days, and you we, would pencil and ink the we story. worked from a script. From a script. And so how did that work? He, he, we were still doing five and six page stories in the 50s. And uh, he would send a script to me, and uh, which he had typed up on. He always typed on the yellow legal pads. And uh, he made it very easy for the uh, artist. And uh, he, he would tell you just what he wanted in each panel, but you didn't necessarily have to follow him. Okay. You, if you thought something else would make a better picture, you could do it your way, you know? So you were, you were free to do it any way you want. I, all the years I worked with Stan, I never had to change anything. And, uh, but working from a script, uh, I liked it. Of course, as you know, later on, they, they went to what they called the Marvel way. Right, and, well, and, and so how, for instance, in that time, in the early 50s, how many stories would you do, for instance, in a month or a week? Uh, well, I had to do one a week. You, so you had you did one like six-page story in a week. In those days, I used to go down to Marvel, down to their office. Uh, it was always on a Friday. My wife and would go down, and uh, Mar Betty would go over to um, Macy's or Gimbel's and and shop, and I'd go down to. Uh, they were in the Empire State Building at that time. And I'd go down to the Empire State Building with my five or six page story. And uh, it, it could be a Western or a war st story or a, a crime or anything. But in any case, and uh, you'd go in Stan's office. He had a little ante room where the artist waited to be called upon. And there'd be, uh, you know, uh, Bob Powell, people like that, Sid Shores, so some of the old timers that I liked when I was a kid even, you know. And uh, Sid Shores was a real nice gentleman. And I used to like the way he did Captain America. And uh, there were Gene Colan, and we'd all sit in the little ante room, you know, talking to one another about our work, and then Stan's right-hand man would would come out and say, uh, uh, all right, uh, Bob or Joe or whatever, and we'd go in and Stan would be behind his desk type on his typewriter, and he had a stack of scripts here. And uh, he, you'd, you'd give him the five or six page story you did, and he'd look at it one end, page after the other, and he'd usually he'd say, great show, no, no problem. And he'd set him aside and he'd take a, uh, a, uh, a script off the top of the pile. Now, he, he didn't even know what he was giving you. <laughs> really, it could be a, another or, war story. Or. It could be a romance. But you, no matter what it was, you were expected to do it because you were a professional. <clears throat> and. Uh, He'd give you that script, and I'd go over and pick up Betty, and we'd go up. I used to park my car up at 238th Street, take the subway down. But anyway, we'd go on home. I'd start it Monday morning. I'd pencil a page Monday morning. I'd ink it that afternoon. Next day would be the same. So when Friday came, I was finished with the story, and we'd hop in my car go all the way down to, uh, you know, the Empire State Building. But after a while, oh, maybe maybe 10 years, almost to the time we went belly up, I said to Betty, I said, you know, we're, uh, I I'm taking off every Friday to go down to see Stan. I'm losing a whole day of work. And it's costing us money eating out. And sometimes we go to a movie or whatever. But I said, uh, I'm going to mail all the work in. And that was roughly uh, about 
from that time until maybe 22, 23 years, I never went down to see Stan. He never saw me. I never saw him. We talked on the phone, and he would mail me scripts. And I'd mail him the finished art. Uh, federal, I mean, no, no, they didn't have Federal Express. And it, I used to, uh, oh, gee, I, uh, first class special, I used to send the work. So Marvel had a convention in 1975. And they yes, they wanted me to come down and sit on the dais. <laughs> it was funny. With John B. Sema, John Romita, Sal Brodsky, Stan, and uh, I forget, Gene Colden maybe. But anyway, I hadn't seen Stan in probably, what, close to 20 years. And uh, it's funny. He, uh, he said, he, 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 he looked over, oh, he said, oh, he, he looked over at me when I, I was the last one there, and I sat down, and I, I said to him, I hollered down to him, I said, Stan, how you been? Because, you know, I knew Stan, and he said, Jack Keller, he said, he thought I was a guy named Jack Keller. He used to do westerns, very, yes. he did westerns very well. And he said, Jack Keller, he said, he got, Stan got up and he came over to him. He said, how come you don't come back and work with us? Keller had left, evidently. And so I thought Stan knew who I was, but was just pulling my leg. So I said, Stan, I said, if, if you paid halfway decent, I'd come back. And he got the funniest look on his face, you know. So he went down and he, he sat back in his seat and I saw him talking to John Romita, and John Romita must have said, that's Joe Sinnott, that's not Jack Keller. So he got up and he came back down to me, and he said, Joe, I'm so sorry. I haven't seen you in so long. I thought you were Jack Keller. So he told all the people there that were gathered, and they all got a big kick out of it, you know. But I still didn't go down. I would mail all my work in, I, and uh, because I, I could work an extra day. It didn't cost me anything to to go down to the city, yes. so I was paid thirty five dollars a page, which was a decent pay, rate in yes. uh, nineteen fifty fifty one. <coughs> and uh, in other words. I'd make $35 a day, and it doesn't seem like yeah, nothing that's a, today. That's but, very good for but in those days, was, I could make a couple hundred dollars a week, you know? Yeah. So uh, I was married. I had uh, three kids at the time. And, uh, but right, uh, maybe every four years, three or four years, Stan would call me up and, and give me a raise. In 1980, uh, 1958, when we went belly up, I was up to $44 a page. Now, 44 was a good rate back in those days. And uh, <clears throat> so Stan called me up and he said, Joe, we're having a little problem. He said, our books aren't selling, you know, once they, and they, they're cooked. Right, right. Explain. So, what, what happened exactly? Well, once the code came in, naturally <clears throat> it killed the uh, the horror trode trend, which was our big tre big seller. Yes. And uh, so, naturally, our books weren't selling as much as they were. So he said, "Can you take a couple dollars cut from your?" And I said, I "No big deal. I have a couple dollars." I didn't realize what it was leading to, though, you know? Yes. So, like, six, four, no, about four months later, maybe not even that, Stan would call again. He says, Joe, he said, things are getting worse. Could you take another cut? And he he, uh, he would take a couple dollars off your pay. So, in 1948, uh, I was... 58. Oh, 50, 58, I'm sorry. 58. 
I was down to $21 a page from 44 So that's almost cut in half wow. your rate. Wow. That's yeah. when a lot of guys left, Johnny Craig for one, oh. and, and people like that. And uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I stayed with them because, hey, it's what I did best. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was still doing a page a day. I'd try to, try to do a page and a half if I could. That was a lot of work. Mm 